welcome once again to the Shades Plays Live here as part of RVTV. How we all doing, everybody? And of course, real quick, I'm gonna take a second here while we're saying hello. Cause I gotta get the tweets out, gotta get the tweets out, gotta get the the, uh, the discords out and all that jazz. So give me just a second. Actually, I got to uh, get the link first. So you guys know where you're going. There we go, let's do this. Can't type today. There we go. that get all this set up I'm not there we go kind of love how my computer goes slow as shit when I'm trying to actually do something And there we go. There we go. Now everything's uh, posted out there for everybody to see. So how's everyone doing tonight? Okay. Uh, oh, sorry about all that, folks. <laughs> Just gotta make sure to get the word out, you know? But I am prepared. Got a big old jug of water ready to go because I know my throat's going to need it. I've been doing a lot of talking here tonight. A lot of talking. So let's get right down to it. And uh, I think we can safely say that I got one word for our uh, big, uh, for our prosecutor in this case, because quite frankly, he needs to hear this. And that is... Objection! Yeah, it is time. Last we left off, we were, fa we were helping to rescue our good buddy and former rival and our rival, Miles Edgeworth, from the dastardly machinations from a murder uh, from a murder accusation and the prosecution of Miles' former mentor, Manfred von Karma. Should be interesting to see how this plays out here. We had just uh, gotten our set a little bit of extra information we did our second day of investigation found evidence re reflecting back to the dl6 incident if you have not seen the previous episode go check the vod god is available on my youtube page go check that out i always try my best to make sure i have the vod up at the end of every show so that you guys can catch up on that make sure you guys know what you are missing and you can hear my lovely professional sounding voice acting <laughs> That's such a lie. Oh, game fan, you crazy bastard. Good luck. You'll need it. But indeed, we are ready for day three of the trial. Let me just get everything set up the way I want it to be. Yeah, just get this put over here so I can see the chat. So let's not waste any more time now. I know some of you guys are here. Let's go ahead and get this underway. Let's get to the trial. Board is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. 
The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here, anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Uh, very well, no opening statement, so... Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. All right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Someone's cocky. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I call my witness now. Right, I call my witness. My decisive witness to the stand. It's the mysterious boat shop owner. Witness, state your profession. Restaurant the Wet Noodle in Gordon Lake. And I uh, also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. You know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead. Objection! Wait a minute! The witness hasn't even stated his name yet! Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah! I predicted this trial will end in three minutes! Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate! You're right! Witness will state his name. Uh, well, uh... I'm not really sure, yep. What do you mean? I, uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm, hmm, he can't recall his name. He can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we, witness? This ought to be good. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, yep. I was at the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. Then I heard a bang, yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now! Uh, yes, Mr. Wright. What the fuck is your problem, asshole? What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Very well, you may begin. Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well, then let's just take our time. May cross-examine the witness. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about who this man that walked by is. Hold it! By your window? Yep, by my window. Right outside the window, my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Wait a minute. Are you sure? Uh-oh. 
to dad! Dead certain, Keith. He said I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. This, this sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Karma, he lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. Better act quicker, this trial's gonna be over. There's really not much else we can do. I raise an objection without any proof. George, there is no room for doubt in this witness's testimony. I demand that you declare your verdict. Mm. Judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Again, what can I do? Can't see any room to raise an objection. I better hold back and see how things develop. Nick, we have to do something! If we stay quiet now, Mr. Edge will be found guilty for sure! It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please! Can you hear me, sis? Please! We need your help. Nick needs you. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough! The witness may leave the stand. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial, nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, guilty. Well, shit. The accused will surrender to the court immediately. Be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. Who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? Larry! What are you doing here? Listen, you, you gotta listen to me. I, I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot! I heard it too! <laughs> and here you guys thought I was fuck messing it up. Water! Objection! What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Carver. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It, it's just not right! I'll testify! Let me testify! Order! Order! Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. George, you've already given your decision. This trial is over. Nick! This is it! Larry's given us one final chance at this! She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. You can make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there's another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilt. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now! What? 
The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Whoa, what a twist! Whoo! That was too close! Sorry to keep at the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hmm. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. But Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right! He found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? That's, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't dig straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses. Perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick! No ten minute trial this time! We'll milk this one for all it's worth! Hey, there's fifteen minutes! Fifteen! Everything's on Larry now. Alright. Court is now back in session. Witness? Please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Carmen didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just, uh, Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Let's do it. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I, uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony for what even this court. In any case, Mr. Ride, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Well, we got an easy one here. Yeah, that... Uh, I've got a problem with that. The autopsy report's over here. Ah. Ah, no, here it is. Lot of deposition. That's what we need to show. Objection! Wait a second, Larry. What? You only heard one thing? You sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts? What? 
You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Yeah? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude! With my headphones! What? Order! Order! And stop that booing! Mr. Butts! You were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everyone listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Mm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Mm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Uh, fuck no. He's, he's already slipped up once. Hell, if he keeps slipping up, maybe he'll slip up in our favor. Continue. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. It's lonely being, alo being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all request row on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talked between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Well, there's really no evidence that I can use here. But, when all else fails, press him. Hold it! What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease this pointless question. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask, huh? Fine, very well. Mr. Bods, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just, that, just when he said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Well, once again, it looks like that deposition from Lada is coming into play here. Because two sh sounds like gunshots just after midnight. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easily. There's something the matter, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve! That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies we've heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas! This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor! Order! Order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. 
However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him, suspicious. What? Mm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Watts' claim here at the gun shop before midnight? <laughs> of course. I gotta stick to my man on this one. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gun shot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. All right. Oh, ah, here it is. Aha, look at the time. Gotcha. Take that! Look at this photograph. And if any of you make a nickel jack, nickel back joke, I swear to God. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp of the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Ooh. Hmm? But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It, it, it is why the photograph exists at all! What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Ah! Oh! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that this is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night, there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There's no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear! Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Well... Gotta go with what we got. Take that! This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order! Order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering why exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murder in this case had the same idea as the murder in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edsworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Right, I mean, is this safe? Safe? <laughs> We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if anything set sounds fishy to you, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So, you finally realized the truth. 
There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp of the photo says 0015, but Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot in the lake. It's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. <laughs> of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer! After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... Well, it's sure as hell ain't gonna be a lot of heart, and we already say it's not Miles, so... We don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah! Again, you waste my time! I don't know because he never told us! The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man! At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? When did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Simple. The boat shop. Take that! Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he can meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have it proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. 
Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Pretty sure. Photoshop shop caretaker. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Um, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Simple. I believe he shot twice to create a, create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit after... Waits a bit... The murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. Someone looking from the edge of the lake it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boot shop caretaker, quickly. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Mm. Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared! He isn't at the boat shop either! What? What should I do? Find him quickly! We cannot allow him to get away! Mr. Von Kahn, what disappeared? A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that bootstrap caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well, court is adjourned. Wow, well, what a twist, huh? Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah, well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else! Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out! Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably gonna get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax! I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No. 
There's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but hmm, I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Well, fuck. Ugh. So, some plot twists on that one, huh? <laughs> now we finally got Edgeworth on the on the uh, on the winning side here, but we're not done yet. We still have one more day to go. One more day. One more bit of evidence gathering, and one more trial. This is our last chance. Can we find the true culprit? Let's continue on and find out, shall we? <sighs> what was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of a murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never! Nick. Hm? Yo! How's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles. Huh, Maya? Swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes. I do remember feeling faint. Right on! Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? Uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two? I think you could do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude! Edgy! You guys should be bowing before me! Yeah, bow before your hero! Hi, Larry. Larry, you really helped us out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick, that boat shop caretaker is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? From where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But, what I do know is, I'm gonna believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But why you, Larry? Huh? Uh, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? <laughs> mm, enough with the silent treatment! Nick! Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true, but when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Uh, um, uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Huh. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm gonna hear this story today and that's final. Okay, okay. Kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? You remember, Larry. Spring, end of third grade. Kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. Oh yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you forget, though. You were out of school that day. 
Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So they thought you did it? Yeah. Kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day, we held a class in trial with me as the defendant. I didn't do it! Guilty! He did it! Guilty! It was you! Thief! Get the money back! You're such a manny! No one play with him! Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I... I didn't. I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. He shouldn't have to apologize! The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence! Anything else has no place! You should all be ashamed! Amateurs! Miles? It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No? Then you shouldn't apologize! Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof! That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent! But Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Why don't you all just shut up? Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it is. Everyone ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. <laughs> I mean, I forgot. That's what I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Uh, yeah, well... I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd have done it. So I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remembered his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then, a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The TL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a, De Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts... The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. What? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him, I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he'd become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick! So, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh, Nick, Nick! Nick! We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. Very, very well may be. 
First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd sell for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go! Alright, well, we talked to one of our friends. Let's go talk to the other. You look as grim as always. Hmm. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple to a fault, even. Well, maybe yeah, but I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good a person. One well, suspect was Embry Haddon in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That'd be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I'd lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had not been of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher, a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does in his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth, if what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! There, now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! Strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Well, not much else we can do here. Well, let's head back to the entrance. Hey, pal! Long time no see! Oh, Detective Gunshoe! Close one today, huh? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that? No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we all, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. Now, I'm off to catch me a criminal. 
Detective Gunshu sure has acted today. Oh, one other thing. <laughs> no one can go into the woods today. The woods? A lot of us camping. The woods are off limits to camping. Apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lana's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Well, not much we can do here. Let's head to the boat rental shop. Let's we'll go through the public beach, obviously. Huh? A steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks well, like the hot dog scan is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edward to show up for work. I hear you coming, child. Don't the stream. Like, am I not trying to be helpful here? I know, but still. I know you're here. Come on. Let's make it quick. Parents these days, oh my god. Say goodnight. <laughs> 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 good night, Jane of Good night. Sorry about that, folks. Let's move on. On to the boat rental shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem! I know that clearing the throat anywhere. Aha, uh -huh. hello! What will you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Mm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Hi. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here, anyway? Who knows? Well, let's... Not much else. Now we can do that. Back into the shack. Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! Quack! Hey, it's Polly! I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello! Hello! I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for himself. Hello, hello, Quack! Hmm, this looks suspicious. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, one, eight, Quack! Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aw. But hey! He keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. Guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Aw, boring! There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Nick! Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes into um, to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice? This is exactly what I figured out today in court! It's all here in perfect detail! What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know. It looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written the letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Oh, 
Well, let's get out of here. I think there's a certain somebody who needs to see this. Edgeworth, see this letter? Mm -hmm. This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge on me? Who is that old guy anyway? I, I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men? Meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance? Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the Statue of Limitations on the DL6 incident! Wait. Wait, that old man. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Yami Yogi was a court bailer for the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long it felt like forever. The air thinned darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Give me a second here. Gotta reload my drink here. Just water. Don't get any ideas. Quiet! I quite said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout, you'll just use up more oxygen! That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yami Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare. It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory... I think, I think the time has come to tell all. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's kid in the dark. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier! I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You'll just use up more oxygen! I... I can't breathe! You... You're using up my air! What? Stop breathing my air! I'll... I'll stop you! Ah! What... What are you... Stop breathing my air! No... No! Father! He's attacking father! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I picked up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Ah! And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. 
But that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, y you mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe... There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about DL6! You're right. I think it's... And he did say... We can come paying with a visit. Let's go talk to the old geezer. Mr. Grossberg! Oh, hello there! What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding! I can't believe you're not! My, my, my! Just calm down and tell me what's happened, hmm? It's, it's Mr. Edgeworth. He, he... <laughs> I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream! Only a dream! I wonder. What? If that's the case, why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Well... Also, consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, you want to frame him for murder. This leads me to, sum to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real, as you imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. No! I don't believe it! Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irreverently wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. Sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fay. My sister. Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Oncala's techniques. That's no surprise. Oncala is extreme man. Ward's testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result? He's had a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. He died in despair as well. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit leader. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son. It's only a possibility, my dear. Possibility nonetheless. Well, we got something to show you. Oh, so this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? 
You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Well, it's not Miles and it's not Yanni Yogi. It can only be. Hmm. Could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma, Von Karma. Wait! You're right, my boy! This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it! I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But, but that means the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh, no! But how could Von Karma know that about Mr. Edgeworth past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare! Mm, that I do not know. But I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win! But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes. An unusual event for the man. It was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe! You have strange ideas about vacation, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. God, if he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Karma's gonna bring up DL6, you can bet on it! What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him! Oh, yes, Mr. Roy. I'd say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that! I... I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But Nick... Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care! I know he's not guilty! Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. Police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I get the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Police materials. Well, I think I know where we're going. Just got to go from here. There we go. Criminal Affairs Department. There's hardly anyone here. And they must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Oh, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check on the other, um, out the records room again. Well, now, I can't just have anyone anyone running around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is there now, anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes. He just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room! Nick! Let's hurry! Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma! Huh. 
Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking at it recently. The label says unsolved cases. Evidence. Hmm, unsolved cases. Nick! The file for DL6! It's completely empty! What? What are you doing in here? Yeah. Fun karma! You! How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edwards' defense team! Defense team? <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. Let's see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. Hmm. So you did. What I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival? That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. You're right. Someone Carmen's gonna bring up DL6 in court tomorrow. Well, time to call him out on what he's pulled. Let me take a sip because my throat's getting dry from this already. Ah. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi? How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So you admit it! You, you wrote Mr. Yogi in this letter! Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? Nick! What is that thing? A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it. Usually. Now, give me the letter. No! No! Whoa, what are you... Nick, run! Ah! Maya! Out of my way! Ah! He got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped him first. Maya! Is she okay? Ma Maya! Maya! Open your eyes! Maya! The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Are you okay? I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now, when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya! There's be some way I can help her. Better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya, she's holding something. What is that? A bullet? TL6 incident eminence number seven, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Hoo, 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 hoo. 
As if we didn't have enough reasons to hate this son of a bitch, now we know he's a murderer. God damn. Woo. I need to stretch after that one. Holy crap. Give me a second. Ugh. Ah, there we go. Uh, ah, there we go. Feel better now. <laughs> ah. Well, it's down to the final day. Let's save our game one last time. And let's finally put this son of a bitch to bed. Take a quick hit real quick. Let's begin. This is it. Judgment Day. Today, things are going to get subtle at last. A lot of things. What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off on my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. She's just looking glum as always. This fucking karma doesn't push him too hard. No! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Try not to let you kid anyone on your way out. What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe! Morning, Mr. Edgeworth! Uh, good morning. How'd it go, Detective? Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. You know, he says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm gonna prove it. Boo! Go, Kai Master! Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. All right, very well. We've reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be odd in the silence about every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Moncalma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gum Gumshoe's effort, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I'd like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness to the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness! Why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. Mm. Uh, I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? Figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. Uh, I mean... I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as it is. <laughs> hmm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm gonna prove it. Well, let's do it. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep, seems like it. 
Then how could you know you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh. Or, or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witnesses testify quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Uh, how am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? It's impossible. Hmm. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Can you say you had no motive? I see you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Unless it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes, yes, Your Honor. You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies! Order, order! Mr. Wright! Is there a serious problem with your claim? Or are you saying... Or are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho oh, oh. ho! Now this is interesting. I'd like to know myself, so who is it? Don't play dumb von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell me yes to this witness's name. Out of doubt. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff! Yogi? The name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi, from the DL6 incident. Figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. <laughs> Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi? Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick! How are you gonna prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. <laughs> huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Hey, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. Where my fingers working with the stuff. Yep. What? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh, hmm? It seems that the case has been decided, no? No! I know what happened. I know everything! I just can't prove it! No, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose! There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one! Nick, what are we gonna do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to. 
Your Honor! The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal! Take Mr. Von Karma up? Oh my, on my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor! I'd like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot! Order, order! Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a false, I object! Wait a second! You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma! I have a right to do as you suggested! Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy! Well, still want to go through with your little game? Oh, yes. Let the parrot take the stand! I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard! Karma's ruined every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff! Bailiff, bring the parrot! That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name! The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt. Ignored by a bird. Ahem, very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify to us. Hello, hello, quack. Hmm, certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well, begin your cross examination. Right. What are you gonna do, Nick? I. Don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. Well, there's really not much else we can do. Let's press it. Hold it! Witness! You can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere! I want you to testify! Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do we say? <laughs> I recall two days ago. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? What? Don't forget DL6! What? If I can get Polly to say that here, that'll prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello, hello! What? That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot something we forgot! Hello, hello! Uh-oh, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it! It's ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Something the matter, Mr. Wright. Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot, could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Let's try it again. Say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, quack! Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot's name is Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? Yes, it does. Ah, fascinating. You claim that the parent's name will prove her owner's identity. Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the questions of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. 
All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... Proof on that. Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file's information connects to this parrot's name? It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Hmm, indeed it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Holly Jenkins. Holy! Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Bah! A mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? She's only seven years. She's only seven years old. Indeed. Alone, it's a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I gonna find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more, if we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Hmm. Very well, witness, you may continue. Let's press it one more time. Is there still one last thing? Skip all this. What's the safe number? Maybe I'll get her to say that number on that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number on the safe in the shack? One, two, three, eight. One, two, three, eight. Oh, what a reckless parrot. Oh, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Ha! Ah, ridiculous! How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof! Or could you possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? Well, again, if you check again... 1228! 1228! Take that! The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright? Where in this file is something relating to that safe number? It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident, December 28. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Oh, he used the date of the DL6 since it is the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see, it certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Ah, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM's card number to 0001 because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with that date, nothing! That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. It's a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately! Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness, he doesn't remember. No, it's okay. I've accomplished what I've wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as a bailiff 
in this very court. Order, order! Yoni Yogi! So was it you who killed Robert Hammond and tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance after 15 years. This was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge? Against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. On karma, where's Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant knows Edgeworth is innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? <coughs> Ass, hold on. <coughs> Son of a bitch! Sorry, folks. There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I'd like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. That is all. This court is adjourned. Objection! Yeah, you knew it wasn't that easy. Did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth! Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have learned, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess! He's gonna say he's guilty! He's gonna tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident! He's gonna tell them he killed his own dad! Oh, what do I do? Ugh. You know what? Screw it. Objection! Objection! The judgment has already been passed! I object to Edward's outburst! Didn't someone like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. For 15 years. I've had a reoccurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. Now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statue of the limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. Order, order! This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statue of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah, it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. 
we try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think, I think I'd like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Orders adjourn. And since we can't wait till tomorrow to code short, we're not gonna have to wait for another part. We're going right now. I'm sorry, right? I just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the crook's circumstances. This is crazy! This is crazy! Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case for what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm gonna prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent! What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it! He confessed that he did it! In court! I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. Now then, I'd like to resume our trial. George, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, the more pointless, let us let the defense do their cross-examining. Statue of Limitations on the DL6 runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. Well, I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Come on, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Mr. Ma will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday. I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That'll be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please... That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot and then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream. We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! The same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's do it. The murder weapon was fired twice, but meh. But single gunshot? Uh, sorry there, Edgy, but once again, I gotta do it to ya. OBJECTION! Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shots and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. 
Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, I'm sure you're aware. This incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as he, as we've heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with this case? Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. What? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. You have evidence that second firing of the pistol is related to this incident. Yeah, look right there. Take that! Look at this photograph. Again, no nickelback jokes. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim is lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. I can see that the victim there is lying, lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired? Where? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Right there. Take that! As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet, there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot! Hold up, hold up! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else! Mr. Wright, but who could someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in for your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at that DL6 in a case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. Case summary? That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter, the whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Kalmer says, the second bullet was fired was not found. It's highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Yeah, 
How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why are you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I, it looks like I was wrong. Nick! If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No. But you said you'd do it, Nick! You said you'd get Edward declared innocent! I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought the two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won! I thought there was another person or someone else who fired kill the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick! Well, it seems we have this finally cleared up this instant. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crawl. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I'd like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh, no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? Here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. My mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? I gotta at least try. Objection! Objection! Your Honor! I... I object! Mr. Wright, on what ground do you object to me? Uh, Nick? I don't know, his case is perfect! Oh no. Uh, it must exist. The second bullet. What? What did you just say? Nothing! The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. Seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers for Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor! Hmm? I, uh... The second bullet! It, uh... It existed! What? But we just heard proof that it did not exist. I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just... Someone took it from the scene of the crime! That's what happened! But, but who? The, the murderer! The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer's search for that bullet? How would the murderer have spent the time to look for the stray, for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Um, um... Bah! The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Uh, had to take it. Had to take it. The murder. What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take the bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... What? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer. The bullet hit the murderer? Just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. You know. Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot, and they left with the second bullet still inside of them, thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yeah, I guess that's how it worked, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside, yes. Yes. 
the two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges, and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved in the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Hmm? I just thought of something. Really crazy. Crazy. Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth starts to blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. It's an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of a shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma! Oh, man! Something wrong, Mr. Wright. You seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murder came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V -v -v uh, my hands are shaking. Of what? Von Karma! Von Karma? You mean THE Von Karma? The prosecutor? The one standing right over there? Bah! You... you don't object. Hm. I see no need why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection. Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident! Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record! Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? Solo claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating! Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Ugh. Nick! Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Uh, nobody's that perfect. So what? So what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane! No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait, what does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? All right, Von Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... Gotta love it. If it's in his cell, if it's in his body, we can prove it right here, right now. Take that! Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it's unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You... you don't mean... I do. There's still... there's a possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma! Is that even possible? For all of these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector! Well, Von Karma, 
I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. Objection. Oh, someone's looking a little sweaty. I refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means you acknowledge that the bull is still inside you. Order, order, order! Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. That's st the statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. <laughs> Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Kama, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. The beep of your doom. It reacted! Something's inside his right shoulder! The bullet! Mr. Von Kar- Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Indeed, there was a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It's Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Not I. Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. It's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof! What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof! Not that one. This one. Take that! That's... A bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident! That was... This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mystery Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings? You may recall the turn. It came up at the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings on the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One bullet, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove that bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare it to the ballistic markings to those on this bullet and solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air! Uh, I'll stop you! Stop breathing my air! 
Peter! Get away! Get away from my father! It's that scream I heard in the elevator 15 years ago. Von Karma! It was you who screamed! Mr. Von Karma? Uh, Edgeworth! Uh, Edgeworth! Only you would dare defy me! So, it was you. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record! And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! Uh, I'll bury you! I'll bury you with my pants! Death! Death! Fifteen years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I'm sorry. On well, Karma, it's not like you... Not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I... I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Huh? Edgeworth! It was a shock like none I'd never known. Me, penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible, burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yoki. He was fooled. Ah, it was the perfect crime. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge! What? What are you doing? Do your job! Bring an end to this miserable charade! Now, end it! Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. That is all. This court is adjourned. Pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure. I was sure we'd had it. I know. I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. And now it's all just a good memory. So, it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try, thank you. I, I see. F thank you, right. You're, you're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. She got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's 
Got you there. Whoa! Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month, but who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Whoop! I... I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it, a, take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've even had this. Unguarded. Hey, y'all! Paula! Y'all are great in there! Thank you! Yo, Edgewood, congrats! Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You... You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? <laughs> I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Keonce. She's, she's gonna live in Paris. Paris, Nick! She's leaving me behind. Should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgy, there you are. Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you come along you come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Uh, yo, yo, Nick. This is the suit that questioned me. He says treat. That's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People get money to wait a way to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh? What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. 38 exactly? N Nick! Wasn't that exactly the amount of much money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38? No. No! Larry, it was you! What are, you so, what are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came to school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know! Really, right. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this year... Well, this year is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth... You should have told me! Now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it! <laughs> Does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did! Well, you've always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. <laughs> yeah, and you got worked up too easily, too. Yeah, the death sentence for both of you! Man, if I, if, only I, if I had only had known, I'd have become a prosecutor! Same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor and fought to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch right? Hey, y'all! Line up! I'll take a photo! Hey, 
photo time, let's go! After that, dinner on me! Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom, even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. Whoa. Went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five o'clock. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter. Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. I was useless, so I decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Bye? What time is it? Ah! The first trains for the mountain have already left! To the station! Guess I'm too late. Hey! Nick? Maya! So, you're leaving. Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Hold it! Hold it! Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes. Only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and you and Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything! All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Evidence? <laughs> did you forget what was the, the, the f defining evidence in this? Take, Take that! A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. You were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm gonna complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See you soon. See you soon, Maya. Thanks, Nick. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page and say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. Same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Uh, yes, your honor. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Objection! Now! Woo-hoo-wee! Hot damn! Hey, pal. Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Woo! Detective Gumshoe! And he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Now, 
Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Why are there credits? This is not the last case. Well, in the original GBA game, this was the last case. Huh? Nick? Eh, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? Uh, I've been working at a cheese shop. And <laughs> Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you call a cheap date. Huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now, yeah. Are we sensing a pattern here? <laughs> Right? Yeah, I remember him. I heard he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Phoenix Wright? Hmm. Ah, oh, the defense attorney for whom I wrote that affidavit for, yes. Oh, you should know I have taken over management at the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Oh, you think I was going to voice all these characters here at the end? <laughs> you must be out of your damn mind. Ha! Get this out of the way here. Ahem! Hmm! Oh, it's you! Phoenix Wright? Oh, yes, me as understudy, was he not? Wonder how he's doing. Haven't seen him of late. Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Phoenix, right? Is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Do you know that they're finally... Ah, uh, there she goes again! God damn it, old bag. I'm pleased to announce that the Pink Princess is a hit. I'm sure I, I sure owe Mr. Wright a great deal. Oh, I'm keeping my face out of the public eye until the show's over. Wouldn't want to ruin any kid's dreams, you know? Sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but didn't have the time, so I sent her some pink princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at, anyway? Right? Who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk pink princess, all right? But... You know, I snuck into the studio the other day, and I saw her, the one inside the pink princess suit. <sighs> what a dog. It's kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. It's days like this, I'm glad I bait menthol, because that helps clear the throat. Yeah, I remember, right? That lawyer guy? Huh, me? I've been trained to become a paranormal photographer. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. <laughs> there it is. we still have one more case to go from the first game rise from the ashes and if you thought this case was if you thought uh, turn about goodbyes was a long ass case hold on to your butts because this one's going to be even longer Anyway, holy crap. 
God damn it, Gokai. <laughs> yeah, the last case here, Rise from the Ashes, was an exclusive for the DS re-release of the original Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, it was, it's going to have a lot of unique features that not many of the other games have. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of different stuff. It's going to be a lot more trickier than a lot of the other cases because it's, it was using, it took advantage of the DS functionality for some unique actions. Not all of them worked out very well, but overall it's fun and it, it's not, and it's something you'll enjoy. I don't think it's, I think it should have been like stuck in the middle of these two, these two cases. It, it should have been in there before Turnabout Goodbye because I think Turnabout Goodbye is a perfect end cap to this to this game. But I guess they just couldn't program a way around that. But either way, no matter how you look at it, this case is a filler case because there's no story that connects to... They try to try to make some minor ties to everything, but in the, in the reality, they're so minuscule that there's not worth it. But we will be covering Rise from the Ashes next week. Uh, again, it will be split into two parts because, quite frankly, there's no way in hell I could do that whole case in one night. Just not possible. But, yeah. Still, I had a blast with this case. I love doing this stuff and, you know... And I'm enjoying seeing you guys watching this and I'm founding along and you know and I would use a certain button here but it's not technically game clear yet so I'm not going to be able to hit that but oh that let me, let me ask a question in the chat so we've got, still got quite a few people in here um because I see we got seven viewers and probably a few more on top of that how many of you have actually played I, I know I've asked before how many of you actually played Phoenix Wright or more people, how many of you have played this case how many of you actually gone through this case? Or actually, more importantly, who hasn't played this game? Ah, okay, okay, Master. So this is new to you. This is good. That's good. I. The only downside for me doing the stream is for you guys. You may not be inclined to play it yourself because you've seen how it ends. This is a, this is essentially a visual novel. Once you've seen it, you know how it ends. You know what the story is. You know what to do there's no incentive for you to play it. And I really, and I really do want to encourage you guys, if you have not played this game yet, go play this game for yourself. Go ahead of me. Play ahead of me. I've beaten these games. I know these stories. That's why I've, you know, even though I'm, all right, you know what? Fine. Fucking spoiler warning. I have a guide up, but I have the allowance to do that because I've played these games in the past. I know how these games go. So I can afford to do that and I, I pretty much already had an idea of where most of this stuff was anyway, so it's not like I'm spoiling that much for myself. But that's why you might see me peek over here every once in a while. I'm looking at my other screen uh, to get to remind myself what I need to be doing. Because I don't... There's really no point in for me trying to guess my way through this. You guys, it's, it's more about showing you the story. It's not like there's that many funny jokes if you mess up, honestly. It's more fun to just go through and enjoy the story as is. But I want to encourage you guys... Buy this game for yourself. It's available on Steam. It's available on Nintendo Switch. It's available on a couple other places. Go buy this game for yourself and play it. You will not be disappointed if you do. It is a fun game. And if you've got a, 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 if you've got a DS and a, and a 3DS, go play the other games. Go play uh, Apollo Justice. Go play Ace Attorney Investigations. Though the sad part is the second Ace uh, Investigation game does not exist. It is not released in America, which sucks. And go play the two 3DS games, Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice. Hell, go even play the crossover with Phoenix Wright and uh, and uh, Professor Layton. It's different, and if you're not a big fan of puzzle of like thought provoking puzzles, of like side puzzles, uh, the the stuff with Professor Layton may throw you off, but it's still got a, good, a decent story to it. But Dual Destinies, if there's any one game I really want to show you guys at some point down the road, it's definitely Dual Destinies. But unfortunately, I don't think that's available on PC. If it is, please, someone let me know. And then there's also the Great Ace Attorney games, or Dai Gakuban Saiban, because that's the Japanese name, Gakuban Saiban. Dai Gakuban Saiban is a new subseries going into the very past 
before Phoenix and all then came into being. It's a completely new cast of characters, somewhat only like very tangentially connected to the main timeline. Uh, but it's just as good, and I'd love to play those as well. But again, though, as Game Fan points out, they have not been released in the States either, which sucks. Come on, Capcom! Did this game not teach... Did they, I'm hoping this game sold well to give you an idea that we want those fucking games! And yes, Game Fan, I am well aware of that case. In fact, not that, but, but just before I started getting into these streams, I was watching uh, a, a channel called Let's Dub Project over on YouTube where they actually dubbed that case in particular. They dubbed a couple of... They never, they've never finished Dual Destinies, which sucks because the, the last couple of cases are really fucking good. But yes, that case was awesome. Still, nonetheless... We will be back to this next week, starting Rise from the Ashes. So I want you guys to go check that out. But, oh, I'm, I'm feeling good now. That was, that was fun. I love that. But that is good for me tonight. Make sure you guys give me a follow here on Twitch if you haven't done so already so you can keep up with, uh, keep up with this and be here next week when we do this again. Of course, follow the RVT Entertainment channels, twitch.tv slash RVT Entertainment. Go check, join that. Make sure you follow them if you haven't done so already. Of course... Uh, support me on Patreon, as always. My patrons will be listed at the end. Uh, make sure you follow me on my YouTube channel, Anime Takeover. Still going on strong. I got new episodes already set up for this week, so be ready all every day, 3 o'clock. New episodes coming out for you guys. But in the meantime, I want to thank you guys for joining me, as always, here on RVTV. On the shades, and we'll see you next time. Rock on! Special thanks to my patrons like Voice and a Frozen Traveler. Subscribe today to make these streams even better.